Hello Adventure Riders from around the world. It is 6th of February, 13 degrees in Varna, Bulgaria. Perfect riding conditions. I will give you two very good reasons to watch this video. The first is that I'm going to discuss one controversial topic, carburetor versus fuel injection for long motorcycle trips. And the second is that I'm going to show you one interesting rock formation located around 50 kilometers north from Varna. Stay with me. Welcome back! If you don't know me, my name is Pavlin and I'm a motorcycle traveler. In this channel I usually upload anything related to long motorcycle trips, so you might consider subscribing. Before I start with the important part of the video, let me explain what is the difference between these two systems. By the way, this is the famous resort Golden Sands. It's a completely different picture in the summer because it's full with people, but it is also nice to see it now. All right, what is the difference between carburetor and fuel injection? Uh, I will try to explain it as simple as possible considering that my language skills are not that great. The carburetor system is very simple. It's rely on the air pressure. What basically is happening is every time when the piston go down, it actually sucks the combination of air and petrol into the chamber and when the spark lighting it, it actually run your engine. Very, very simple system. It works for many years and uh, it works in 95% of the time. On the other hand, the fuel injection system is a little bit more complicated. It requires power. It has these injectors or jets, whatever the right name it is. It has a fuel pump and it's not rely on the air pressure because it makes its own pressure. This makes it a little bit more complicated and of course more efficient, but we're gonna talk about it later. The usual advice that you're gonna hear from 90% of the long distance riders, especially my generation or older, is that nothing is better than carburetor. Because, as I said, it is very simple system, it does not require any expensive parts, and it could be fixed almost everywhere around the world. On the other hand, fuel injection system is more complicated. It cannot be fixed on the road. You need some expensive parts like an injector, you need an ECY, you need a fuel pump and many more. And this is also absolutely correct. I fully agree that a broken fuel injector or ECY cannot be fixed on the road, no doubt about it. I also agree that the carburetor system is much more simple and everywhere around the world you can fix it no doubt but there is one big but as i told you guys many times everything what you say before but is shit everything what you're gonna say after but is what really matters all right let's dig deep into the facts once again and see what we can learn from it the very first you can fix carburetor everywhere around the world that is true but i have a question for you can you do it 90% of the riders have no idea how to fix their carburetors. If for any reason you know how to do it, you're from 10% of the riders. The second question that I have, can you adjust the carburetors or so-called synchronizations? If you have two or more cylinders, you will have two or more carburetors. And once per 20, 30 or 50,000 kilometers, you need to synchronize them, otherwise they won't work properly. Once again, 90% of the riders cannot do it. The third point that came into my mind now is that, let's say you have a bad fuel. It has uh, sand or dust on it and you have to clean the carburetor. But the question is, can you do it alone? Once again, 90% of the riders cannot. They will need help. In all of these free scenarios, you will need help unless you're from this 10% very skilled mechanics all right but when you have help when you have a garage mechanic friend or someone who know what he is doing then even the fuel injection is not a problem i hope that you get the idea by the way this is already balchik very beautiful coast town located around 40 kilometers north from varna and this is the beach area uh, i hope we'll be able to find something to eat I know that the restaurants are closed, but at least 
maybe to grab something let's try quick shot from Balchik and its beach area beautiful place I really love it until we're still on the topic let me tell you something else yes you can fix carburetor almost everywhere but you need spare parts unless you have with you your jets your membranes or everything that it's possible to fail on a simple carburetor but if you have a spare parts with you with your injection system you can fix it as well for example you can have a spare injector which is that big like your finger you can put it everywhere you can have even a fuel pump yeah it's a little bit bigger but it's not a big uh, brain game to change it even you can do it if you have to this is the first option if you have a spare parts with you if you don't have it you have to order it or they need to be shipped from somewhere so it doesn't matter what you're gonna order a fuel pump or simple jet you will need a technical delivery time so it's about the same and finally when you have it if you cannot change it if you cannot fix it you need to pay to the mechanic and when you pay to the mechanic it's not going to be a big difference to change your injector or your jets in your carburetor this is a very popular restaurant here in Balchik of course closed because of pandemic but we managed to get some takeaways so we have nice food and beer excellent cheers my friend cheers all right what i just did is to give you a different point of view on the pros of the carburetor system and there are many cons let's start to discuss it number one it's maintenance it requires maintenance as i said every 20 30 or maximum 50 000 kilometers you have to clean the carburetor you have to adjust synchronize carburetors if you have more than one and you cannot escape from that this is like a must you have to do it otherwise your motorcycle is not going to work properly but let's see something else something more problematic if i want to say number one elevation as we discussed already the carburetor works on the air pressure and when the elevation is different when you have a high elevation the thickness of the air is different and this got a direct impact on your carburetor with the simple words it doesn't work or it works on 20 30 percent of its uh, capacity what you have to do to stop and adjust it if you know how but let me give you another one example with my riding friend Dima we were in Pamir highway riding at around 3500 meters above the sea level and of course the the air was uh, not that uh, thick so we need to adjust the carb and before the trip I asked him do you know how and he said yeah 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 my mechanic showed me what bolts I have to twist and everything is going to be all right but when the moment came we spent around half an hour trying to fix the carburetor or to adjust the carburetor and finally instead of adjust it for our air we made it even worse because he couldn't remember which bolts where exactly he needed to turn and many more like this so finally we finished doing nothing and the result was that on the top of Ak Baital he needed to ride on the first gear very very slowly on that position I with my itinerary was riding without any problems because I have a fuel injection so anytime when you need to ride over 3000 meters you will feel it and you actually need to adjust the carburetor when I was in India in 2018 I was riding Royal Enfield Himalaya carburetor so when I reach 3000 3200 and it starts working very very powerless and if I leave it to idle it's almost stopped every time so I need to adjust the carburetor luckily before the trip I asked a local mechanic and I, I knew exactly what I have to do and uh, later when I come back from the high elevations I need to adjust it once again but anyway adjust it or not it's never worked really properly it's it did the job 
but not really properly. Another example that I can give is from Pakistan. I was riding 250cc fuel injection Benelli and my riding friend was with 150cc carburetor. He has a huge problem, huge problem to climb over 4000 meters. So all of this is simply avoided if you have a fuel injection. Another point that you have to consider is cold and hot weather. In both spectrums, cold or hot, your carburetor is not going to work so well. On the early starts, you need your choke or you cannot start the engine. On the very hot days, because the air is so expand, the bike is not going to work so well. It's, it's just noticeable. All right, all of these cons are very well known, but let me tell you another one that you might be never heard of. And this is bad petrol. Everybody will tell you that bad petrol is, is very bad if you have a fuel injection. But I will say it is worse if you have carburetor. Because every fuel injection system got a fuel pump. Every fuel pump got a filter inside of the tank. Which is mean that almost nothing goes into the fuel pump and from there into the injectors. Unless your filter is so dirty or damaged then the fuel pump can suck some dust but it is not the same with the carburetor it's a straight line from your tank to your carburetor unless you fix by yourself a filter which I have seen too many bikes but not on every bike so again in case of bad petrol the fuel injection will be way better because when I was in uh, Pamir Highway I was feeling so bad petrol most of the time like 83, 86 octans and the bike just worked yeah the power was different the uh, engine was knocking all the time but the bike was working even with the worst petrol that you can imagine filled from uh, big petrol tanks with a glass jar and nothing like the petrol station we've got here but one way or another I went through without any problems. This is beautiful road. Have a look at the coast. Wonderful. All right. All of these were the cons of the carburetor, but let's see what are the cons of the fuel injection system. Just a second. Oh man, I love this place. I love it. So, it looks like all of the cons of the carburetor are like a pros for the fuel injection system the main downside or the most popular beliefs that most of the riders got about the fuel injection system is that it might stop on the road and you won't be able to continue your trip but i have a question for you once again have you ever heard for a fail injection system and let me tell you something modern fuel injection systems are extremely reliable the reason why most of the people are afraid because they still consider it like something new and they don't trust this new system but this system actually is not new at all the first fuel injectors are made in the 1911 and then in the 20s 30s from the 40s and 50s they are already installed in many different machines uh, include cars and um, airplanes and many more and in the last 20 30 years you can't even find a car or motorcycle without a fuel injection system so they're extremely reliable extremely reliable but even if this is still the main con even if you stop on the road there is still way to fix it what i plan to do now for example on my trip to magadan to take with me a spare injector and spare fuel pump and this will give me the chance to rebuild it on the road if i have to and I'm gonna take it with me because my engine got so many kilometers if I've got a new engine I won't consider even that as I did it for so many trips I never worry about it and my motorcycle got 160,000 kilometers so to say that fuel injection system is not reliable and you can stop on the road it's just not serious you can have far more problems with a carburetor than you can have with a fuel injection system and before we close this topic we have to discuss something else and it is efficiency fuel injection motorcycles are way more efficient than 
the carburetors and everybody know that even the kids know that if you have a fuel injection your motorcycle will use less petrol it will run better in any kind of weather conditions you don't need to worry about choke and, and stuff like that this is Balata beautiful beach What a spot! Have a look at this watchtower and the rocks and the sea and the water is so clean at the moment. And now have a look how waterproof are my boots still after more than a year. A serious use. Good job, Revit. Good job. Oh, what a place. In my last video, air cooled versus liquid cooled engine, I asked you a very simple question. If the air cooled system is so good, why 95% of the new motorcycles comes with liquid cooled system? And even those motorcycles maybe five percent that still comes with uh, air-cooled engines will perform better if they have a liquid cooled system and now in this video i can ask you the same question if the carburetor system is better why 95 98 percent of the modern motorcycles comes with full injections only a few very rare models that are usually Chinese bikes or whatever low-cost bikes are possible to come with uh, carburetors and you will probably give me the same answer that you gave me in the last video because of the emissions because of the environment and stuff like that but I'll tell you guys if there is a demand there will be a supply if people ask for carburetors they will make it so the market is very simple when people ask for something the manufacturers usually give it to them so in my opinion of course this is only my opinion but the fuel injection system got many more benefits it's like a like a GPS and paper map most of you know and understand that paper map is trouble free but because the GPS give you so many different benefits so easy to use that all of us use it one way or another and now this is the place that I have promised to show you the famous rock formation the name of this village is Tulenovo Tulen means seal on Bulgarian language and many years ago there were seals here in this spot not anymore because the climate changed but it was a fact I already show you this place on uh, one of my episodes for Bulgaria but honestly guys I don't mind to do it again this is the famous rock formation let me come here here is better yeah wonderful just wonderful so I hope that this video will be useful to at least one person to learn something new and make the right choice if you want to know more about long motorcycle trips check the rest of the videos on the channel i have more than 600 already if you want to learn but you don't have the time you might consider joining my online course all the details you can find in the description down below always ride safe and see you next time ciao